Okay, so carrying on, uh, favourable media attention can also lead to the success um, or otherwise of some groups as well. Um, so, for example, uh, campaigns which gain favourable media attention essentially then get free advertising from those newspapers and stuff. Um, it can also work the other way, can't it? If a pressure group does not get favourable media attention, uh, that can actually work against them. So if they've done some stunt or some demonstration which has gone wrong or something, you know, the press might, might, might you know, highlight the things that went wrong, essentially. And linked into all this is celebrity endorsement as well. Prosecutors who get celebrities on side, especially if they're popular celebrities, again, uh, is often a way of getting media attention and, and all the rest of it. So, for example, this is the guy, um, Thingy Armstrong, how his first name is now. He does pointless, doesn't he? He's a big supporter of the Countryside Alliance, uh, which um, campaigns for uh, the, the countryside and the countryside values, etc., etc. On the right, uh, there's Joanna Lumley. Uh, she was a famous, well, I think she still is, a fairly famous actress. She does lots of comedies and stuff. And here she is confronting uh, the Labour minister in 2009 over um, Gurkhas. So her interest was the Gurkha justice campaign. Um, and she was successful in having meetings with the, um, the government, because obviously she's a celebrity, so she kind of, in some ways, has that little bit easier access to them. Um, her main interest was allowing Gurkhas the right to stay in the UK um, if they served in the British forces. Um, leadership of a pressure group is really important as well. Um, so, for example, a well-run, well-organised pressure group uh, with an effective kind of leadership can be quite effective, you know, just in terms of organising what campaigns they're going to do, how they're going to get media attention, how they're going to you know, use their resources, etc, etc. Also, if leadership does not go very well, it can have a negative impact. So if you think of um, Fathers for Justice, for example, um, they had quite an effective leadership because they were campaigning for better rights for men. So, you know, like when parents get divorced and stuff, and uh, the argument which they had was that women, the law is very much in favour of the woman, basically, um, and fathers have, have a right to see their kids as well. They were quite successful for a number of years um, in having quite interesting demonstrations and stunts and stuff and quite an effective leadership. Uh, they had partial success and the leadership basically left. Um, I think they you know, thought they got as far as they could get. It was taken over by some new people and it has not been anywhere near as successful since. There have been lots of splits and arguments amongst the group and it's kind of disappeared as a force. Uh, Shami Chakraborty, there she's on the left. Okay, she is the lead of Liberty Pressure Group. And again, she's often been seen as being quite effective. She's quite good on the TV as well. Uh, being interviewed about civil liberty issues, which is her main concern. Uh, she was very successful, her and Liberty, campaigning um, against ASBO's antisocial behaviour orders, which people had. Um, Bob Geldof and Bonner were quite uh, successful in highlighting the issue of world poverty and the Brown years. But again, uh, the Brown government were quite interested in world poverty anyway, so they were kind of pushing at an open door. But again, uh, they had that celebrity status. But I suppose recently with like environmental issues, you've got David Attenborough, haven't you, uh, been getting involved. But I don't think he's actually associated himself with a particular pressure group. He's just used his celebrity status to get lots of media attention, highlighting the plight of various um, animals and environmental issues, which is probably indirectly therefore help pressure groups who favour the environment. This is quite an important one for why some are successful. It's the strength of the opposition. Now, how strong are the opponents of what you want? So if we take the Snowdrop campaign, you know, wanting to put restrictions on handguns, well, the industry in favour of guns, you know, the gun industry, I suppose, they, they were not particularly strong. And given the wave of kind of revulsion about what had happened in Dunblane, uh, they obviously couldn't mount much of an opposition to Snowdrop. Um, so the opposition strength can be quite significant. So Ash, for example, the action of smoking and health, as we said, under the Blair Brown years, uh, they had the ear of the government on this issue. But in the 1980s, they didn't get very far because the big tobacco industry kind of had a lot more money, a lot more resources. Uh, they donated to various political parties and they didn't really get very far in the 1980s. But when it came round to the uh, 2000s, 
ash had much more support because the government took less notice of big tobacco. There's also been a lot more stuff with the BMA about the health implications. So if the opposition is weak, you're much more likely to have success. If the opposition is strong, then your chances of success are less. And again, look at HS2 railway line, you know, uh, the CBI are very much in favour of it. They have the ear of the government, unlike Stop HS2. Therefore, Stop HS2 have kind of been on a bit of an uphill struggle, really, uh, right from the start, because of the opposition is so much stronger and more organised and uh, has the ear of the government much more. OK, um, outsider pressure groups are also just inherently weaker because they don't have that ear of the government. OK, and some of the methods which outsiders use can also uh, alienate the public. Um, so here, for example, uh, this is, is it 2010, 2011? Uh, this is the NUS, the National Union of Students, which is a pressure group. They were upset about the tuition fees increase. They had this big protest, which to begin was quite peaceful. OK, and, you know, they may have had some sympathy from few, you know, quite a few people and parents of students, you know, have to pay this £9,000. Uh, but when there were some demonstrations that actually went a bit wrong and one or two trouble causes caused problems and, uh, as you can see on the right, the media then latched onto the, the negative side. OK, uh, so there's some of the issues surrounding why some groups are more successful than others. And again, this could well be an exam question. You value the view that uh, gaining public uh, favourable media attention is the most important reason why some pressure groups are more successful. Or conversely, have the other way around. You value the view that uh, outside of pressure groups is the main reason why many groups fail to achieve their aims. It could be success or failure. But they're the points that you need to put. So what I'd like you to do is that you've got the A3 sheet, which I'm about to send out an email, which you need to complete. In your booklets, you've also got a page called Comparing Two Pressure Groups and Why They May Have Been Successful or Have Failed. Uh, the exam specifications, you need to know, you'd have two specific examples of why groups have succeeded or failed. So that sheet is designed to go with um, another document I will send out where I've got a few more examples, some specific campaigns of pressure groups which were or were not successful. You've got the RMT and some strikes and some various other ones. Feel free, though, to write about more pressure groups. You can always duplicate that page. You can always copy and paste it, kind of do a few more pages of it. Uh, the Jenkins textbook's got some quite nice examples of pressure groups being successful and not successful. So, again, um, in essays, you know, we've said before, you have two examples, really, in paragraphs four and two examples against. So the more examples you can have, the better. So feel free to duplicate that page for your work booklet to do some more stuff on it. Uh, there's also on Teams, there's a couple of um, politics review articles as well on this area, which again, I'm not going to check that you've read them, but I strongly suggest you do. Uh, there's one called um, Politics Review, Why Do Some Pressure Groups Fail? And there's one called Politics Update, Continuity and Change in Methods Used by Pressure Groups. There's also an article, I think I put it onto Teams, about um, direct action as well. So there's quite a lot of stuff there to get your teeth into, uh, to look up about these things. Um, and I will be doing another video in the next few minutes on the next little topic. So, um, yes, yeah, so you need to crack on with that work, because there will be another video lesson you need to do before um, I see you all um, next.